Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I'll be breaking down the upcoming 2024 winter event and the free tier 6 ship that you can earn from it, the Elios Intel Scout Vessel. As always, chapters to each topic are listed down below. Starting with the basics, this event starts up tomorrow, December 3rd for all platforms and will be running up through January 2nd of 2025. As with any prior winter event, in order to obtain the free tier 6 ship, you will need to do any of these 6 listed tasks daily for 20 of the 30 days. Those tasks are the fastest game on ice, thing on ice fishing, tides of ice, the fast and the flurious, cones of conduct, or the Crampiri. In addition, a buyout option will be available, typically for the winter event. You're looking at a buyout that is going to cost a thousand lobby, and then it decreases by 50 for each day of the event you have completed. And before I get into the ship itself, I want to quickly look at the new ground weapons and costume additions. The first ground weapons here are new variants of nanopulse weapons, Ushan Tor. These offer a quick and strong attack that leaves no room for your enemy to breathe. And then there's also some new retro batlist incoming with some red and blue variants. And next up is the Anar Ushan Tor side blades. These have the ability to release a telepathic outburst which will damage and knock back nearby foes and assault their mind with confusion for a short duration. And scrolling down on the blog, Something else that we don't have a picture of is this Wonderland Transformation Snow Person. This is an entirely new type of device that players can obtain in order to fight off the Wonderland's antagonist. Take the form of a vicious, or nicer both, snow person by using this all new transformation device. This device transforms the player into a snow person and they gain four abilities, Snowball Throw, Stomp, Frost Breath, and Snow Bomb. To spice things up, you get a random snowman variant every time you transform. So. This is going to be a new device that lets you turn into a snowman, and I think some of you are going to have some fun with that. And the final non-ship addition are these four new ugly sweater variants. From left to right, these are Moopsie Jaws, Moopsie Smile, Mark Twain Suit, and Tuvix Orchid. And before I get into this ship, I want to take a moment to let you all know that Real Merch is running their Cyber Monday sales featuring Eagle Moss ship models from both Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica. These sales have some ship models at over 25% off, and you can stack an additional 5-10% to off by using code CASUALSAV at checkout. If you're interested, I'll have a link and my affiliate discount code in the pinned comment down below. And next up is the stats breakdown for the Elios. This is a ship from Season 3 of Star Trek Picard. We saw this at the very beginning of that season. This was the ship Beverly Crusher was on, and it is the ship that was tractor beamed and thrown into the Titan. So it is a very small... Very small ship and had only a few people on board. And heading over to the stats, this has a hull modifier of 0 0.9, shield mod of 1.4. So the hull modifier seems low, but that's actually pretty standard for these scout ships. And for the shield mod, this is actually the highest shield mod that we've seen on a scout ship so far. For the weapon setup, a 4-2, and it does have the ability to run dual cannons. It has two device slots. We'll go over the bridge officers in a moment. Console-wise, 3 TAC, 3 Inch, and 5 Psi, base turn rate of 19, impulse mod of 0.2, inertia of 80, so this thing is going to handle very, very well. For the power buffs, plus 10 to shield and engines. It has the gather intel ship mechanic, being it does have a commander intel. It does have all the science perks also, like subsystem targeting, sensor analysis, and a secondary deflector slot. It does have raider flanking, being a scout ship. And for the mastery package, that's plus weapon accuracy, plus exotic damage, plus weapon crit severity, and plus increased healing. For the bridge officer setup, this has a commander science with intel, a lieutenant commander universal with miracle worker. That miracle worker is not very strong here. Then we have a lieutenant commander universal, lieutenant engineering, and an ensign tack. Now, these two seats are a bit different because these scout ships historically have had a lot of universal seating on them. So compared to the other scout ships out there, this ship is going to be a bit more limited. That Merc Worker secondary spec is not really doing anything for you on a science build. Merc Worker is, outside of being a primary for the Dexter console, Merc Worker is a rather weak specialization in the, the current state of the game. It needs a, a bit of a revamp, needs some uncons added to it. Um, so as is, that is not really offering much and those those two fixed lower rank seats are also a bit of a disadvantage for this ship. Now for the comparison here, 
the the ship that I think most of you'd probably be looking at for a similar play style would be the Chekhov Intel Science Warship, which is a thirty dollar Zen store ship that was added earlier this year with the fourteenth bundle. And you know, for any build that I think you'd put on the the Elios, I think you can do it better on the Chekhov. The the Chekhov has a better spec combo with Intel Temporal. It's got a better bridge officer setup because with these scout vessels and these warships like this, you're going to have a bit of a weapons focus on them. That's how they're they're designed. And the Chekhov is just going to be able to more effectively have a weapons based build on it. The, the Elios is still a fine ship for, for being free, but this is very much a case where as soon as you're willing to get a Zen store ship, that Zen store ship is going to be a much better option for you. Next up for the Admiralty card, 34 inch, 33 tack, 59 psi, and the special is plus six psi per any ship. So that's actually a pretty good Admiralty card on this. Next up is the console, which is legitimately very, very interesting. This is the custom power matrix. This console handles a series of custom wiring and system overhauls meant to improve the overall management of power across the entire starship. It comes with three pre-programmed specialized routines meant to divert power from one of the three subsystems into other parts of the energy matrix. Activating any of these routines will increase the performance of bridge officers. Diverting power from shields will boost your weapon's firing cycle. Diverting power from aux will increase your weapon's critical chance. And diverting power from the engine will increase your weapon's critical severity. All three of these routines can be online at the same time. And the passives on this console are really interesting. This is going to give a different effect depending on the console slot you have this slotted in. So if it's in a universal console slot, it's going to give you a power transfer rate buff. If it's in a science console slot, it's going to give you a shield power buff. If it's in attack, it's going to give you engine power. If it's in an engineering slot, it would give you aux power. So it's a really neat concept and seeing it change depending on what slot you have it in, that's pretty interesting. Overall, I think the console you know, it's just a really neat concept. You know, we're, we're going to have to wait and see what the numbers are. But if this isn't taking too much power and the buff from it is substantial enough, this is easily a console that you could see becoming a staple on many builds. And for the Starship trait, this is Power Specialist Credentials. Once every 15 seconds, when you activate a Shield Heal Bridge Officer ability, grant yourself and up to 10 allies in a 5km radius, 20% of your max shield capacity, a shield regeneration every 2 seconds for 10 seconds, and a bonus plus 30 Starship Exotic Particle Gen for 10 seconds. So this is a Shield trait. I don't know how effective this one's going to be, uh, but this probably won't be relevant to most of you. And final thoughts on the Elios. As a free event ship, it's a solid ship. It's not perfect. As a science ship, it was never going to be as popular as the other ships we've seen this year, but it is still very solid. But long term, I do think that the main draw to this ship is going to be its console, which looks like it has potential to become very popular on weapons based builds. We'll have confirmation of that tomorrow, as I'll be streaming after the winter event goes live and I'll be testing it out. But that's going to be it for today. As always, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. See you guys around.